Mia from Island Centero. This video is a VR to Katie Flowers and the hashtag only 10 decks. So if I could only keep 10 decks from my collection. So the decks that I picked is just purely based on, well, I just went with my gut. <laughs> so decks that I'm currently working with, currently loving, and decks that I'm always working with and that I just can't live without. Which brings me to my <laughs> other thought of soul decks. Are some of these decks soul decks? Yeah, yeah, definitely some of them are. And I just saw Kelly from the Truth and Stories Pieces of My Soul video, and I definitely want to do one of those too. And I think for Kelly's, there's, um, you know, different categories and some of my decks that are definitely soul decks, I maybe don't use them all that often, but it's still a soul deck. There's still a really deep connection. But for this tag, for Katie's only 10 decks, this is purely what I'm working with right now and things that I'm always working with. And for me, it's really that feeling of like, oh, I just, I can't live without this because I use it so often. So with that, no caveats, no <laughs> honorable mentions because I'm the worst at this. I have the hardest time just following along. So really, Tarot and Oracle, this is only 10 decks. <laughs> and I thought it was gonna be difficult at first, but really it was, it was kind of a simple choice. And it was very clear once I sat down and looked at the decks and then I just, I just knew. So this is the VR for Katie Flowers. Stay tuned for another VR to the pieces of my soul from Kelly from the Truth and Story. So let's look at some decks. Okay, so I would like to say that these are in no particular order. However, <laughs> when I went to go select them, it was interesting to me how my brain automatically picked out four decks, just that I knew without a question of a doubt and didn't need to think about it. No hemming or hawing, four decks immediately. So I'm going to mention those four first because I think it would be interesting to do this video once a year around this time and to see how things change or move around or, you know, what stays consistent, etc. And I have a feeling that even if I did this for a number of years, I have a feeling that these first five would be the same and irreplaceable. I know there's some, you know, people that really connect with the thought of soul decks. I definitely do. And I know you've probably heard me say before, oh, I just, I couldn't live without this deck. And that's the truth. So let's get started. First one, no surprise to anyone, I'm sure is the Shadowscapes Tarot by Stephanie Human Law with the guidebook by Barbara Moore. It's published by Llewellyn. Oh, what can I say about this deck that I haven't already said a hundred times over? I love it. This is a um, breaking free deck for me had very, been very structured in my learning of the tarot, and this was one of the first decks that I got that really helped me love the tarot and not treat it like something that I needed to just memorize. So for that reason, I love it. I also thoroughly enjoy the artwork. There isn't a card in this deck that I don't like. A lot of symbolism with the plants and animals, and I really enjoy that. The fantasy feel to the make-believe creatures, sort of elf and fae-like beings. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And I mean, I wish they were big. I wish they were like druid craft big and I wouldn't trim any of it. <laughs> it's just so detailed. I feel like you can get so much out of each card. And they really tell a story. Like here on this one, we can see, sorry, I'll try to hold it real close. 
these sort of tree nymphs twisted into the tree. I just, I think it's also stunning. And this deck definitely feels like, you know, coming home. There's, we're definitely familiar with each other and oh, it just knows me very well, but it's also the kind of straightforward and blunt that I need at times, but then nurturing at others. Gosh, I love this. I'm sorry, I could go through the whole deck. I'll let this one be the last one. Queen of Pentacles, she's sort of a part of this tree. Oh, oh I love it so much. So the Shadowscapes, and I think no matter how many years I waited, if I did this once a year, this would always be, if not the first, definitely at the top of the list. Next I have the Animal Totem Tarot. The art is by Eugene Smith. The book is by, created by Lisa Robertson. So this is another one where I've said before, you know, I couldn't be without this deck. And that's the truth. I love the style of the artwork. I love the intention behind each animal chosen for each card. And I'm gonna say this tentatively, but this is definitely the deck that I reach for first when I want to work with an animal deck. However, I'm about to mention another one that is, you know, right up there with this one. I don't want to hurt this one's feelings, but there's another that is real up there. Come real close. I've been obsessed with. But I can definitely feel this one calling to me like, hey, don't forget. And I never could. So it's a piece of my soul. I couldn't imagine my collection without it. And how I look at the tarot and the decks that I enjoyed and started to like after this deck, everything changed. So I feel like this was a, just like with the Shadowscapes, a major point in my tarot journey. And I wouldn't be, you know, the reader that I am today without this deck. So. The Animal Totem Tarot. Oh, and then this one is published by Llewellyn as well. All right. Next, I have the Crystal Visions Tarot by Jennifer Glasso. This is published by US Games. So this is really, really high up there with the Shadowscapes with the same intention behind it. For me, the feelings, the sort of Fae and elf-like people in this fantasy forest, land. This one is just a little bit more um, Rider Waite Smith. Whereas Shadowscapes can differ a little bit. And for that reason, this makes this very easy to connect to and easy to read. It comes across very well. And this one can be very spirited with me. And I really love that about it. I wish that US Games would do a republish on maybe a little bit larger card, borderless, without the um, copyright, excuse me. But that's just me being picky. I still love using this deck. And I got it shortly after, maybe not too shortly, but relatively after the Shadowscapes and I love them equally and use them just as much. And I also feel like if I'm like super flustered and like really frustrated and I, well, I'm the least organized person ever. So my decks are just like around the house on different tables just wherever, wherever I put them last. And so as I walk through and I'm like, hmm, who's, you know, calling to me today? But if I'm really like flustered and I just don't have that like patience or that calm peace of mind to just 
calmly select a deck. This is normally the deck that I turn to, just because there's no shadow of a doubt. It's not that it's, you know, I feel like, hmm, I haven't worked with that in a while. No, that's not it. It's just like, oh, I need this right now. And I don't want to think about it. I don't want to him and haw and pick over a deck, or excuse me, pick through the decks. And so I turn to this one. It's very calming, very clear reads. Love it. Okay, last one. So the Crystal Visions Tarot by Jennifer Glasso. It is published by US Games. Okay, so this would probably be no surprise, but for the fourth one, I have the Oak Ash and Thorn. So this is the animal deck that really, really took over that top animal deck spot in my collection. I've been obsessed with this deck since I got it last year. And I really just feel like we're two peas in a pod now. Has it been too long to say that the honeymoon phase has not ended? <laughs> and so I found myself turning to this deck a lot. And I started to feel like, oh, the animal totem is going to think that I don't love it anymore, and that is not the case. So I've been going back and forth between the two, but between these two, they've edged out a lot of my other animal decks, which I think is very interesting. Between the two of these, they just give me everything that I need animal-wise. Oh my gosh, he's so precious. I just... Ugh, so cute. So whereas the animal totem has a different animal on each card, this one has the specific animals for the suits, and I rather like that. I feel like I'm stepping into a forest and enjoying the earth and nature along with these forest animals. And I think that's why it can be so nurturing because it really has that uh, deep-seated earth power mixed in with the animals so this deck has just truly truly been a precious gem to have in my collection and just side note i'm super excited about her little dragon deck that she has coming out i've already pre-ordered it smoke ash and embers and i'm hoping that i will love it just as much as this Oh, this is a perfect one to end on. So adorable. It just, it makes me smile. I love it. Okay, so those four were the first four that came to mind like immediately. I didn't even have to think about it. And then the next was the first Oracle deck that came to mind with those four. So I guess if I had to only pick Five. Oh, I better not even go there. But if I had to only pick five, that this might be the five. So the fifth one I have is the Isis Oracle. Again, probably comes as no surprise. Ugh, this deck. So I've mentioned before, I own this deck and then I cold it just based on the fact that I just didn't give it the time of day. I was busy. I didn't have time for it. I was working with other things. And then when I was moving, I just felt like I'm not paying for, you know, a single ounce of stuff that I don't need. And so I called it, but upon repurchasing it, I got this nice matte cardstock. So this is published by Blue Angel. It's by Alana Fairchild and Jimmy Manton does the artwork. So this is a, for me, mostly single or three card pool at the beginning or the end of the day. I think it's a lovely way to start the day and definitely a fantastic way to end the day. I sit with some tea, do a reading, and it can be so nurturing, yet also, I don't wanna say strict, more of a uh, firm, structured feeling if I need it, but it's always exactly what I need when I need it. 
And even if I have that feeling of, huh, wow, okay, I always know that I needed it. Every single message from it, so poignant personally and present at the time of the reading. I'm never questioning or sort of feeling like, huh, okay. And then maybe it becomes relevant later on in the day, a week. No, it's always super spot on. And I love it so much. I'm so glad that I chose to repurchase it. Oops. And just give it another go. Because I mean, I always did love the artwork. I just never connected with it because I didn't give it the time of the day. And I'm so glad that I went back to it. So again, I couldn't be without this deck. The Isis Oracle. It's just stunning. And this new version with the mat is just lovely to work with. Okay, next. I have the Work Your Light Oracle by Rebecca Campbell and Danielle Noel. This is published by Hay House. So I specifically got this deck to work with the Star Child Tarot because I had a really good connection with it and I really love that tarot. And I honestly think I love the Star Child Tarot. Don't get me wrong, but you will notice that it's not on this list. However, this is, and, oh, this is one of my favorite cards. I just really connected with this, and I use it in the same way as the Isis Oracle in the morning or in the evening, single card or three card pools, and it can be very calming. I also feel like this deck is patient with me. And there have been many times that it, I've gone days in a row and pulled either the same card or the same card has come up within the three cards that I've pulled. So it's um, persistent is a good word. But as with the Isis, it is exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm glad that it's patient with me to take that time to really drill it in. such a calming deck. This deck, when I use it, it, you really feel like you've created this lovely, you know, aura of personal space and nothing can bother you while you're with this deck. It just blocks out any negative energy. I just love it for that reason. I have absolutely no room for negativity in my life. And this deck is positive vibes only. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, I could probably show the whole entire deck. So that is actually, those are the only two oracles that I have on this list, which is interesting to me how that worked out. Two oracles and eight tarot. All right, let's keep going. So for seven, we have the Dreams of Gaia Tarot by Raven Phelan. This is published by Blue Angel. And I know I've spoken before about having a really deep connection with this deck, and I really do. Sometimes it can be a little heavy, but in a wonder wonderful, excuse me, absolutely wonderful way where it just really digs into my soul and my subconscious and brings to the forefront maybe things that I've suppressed, things that I have avoided, and I shouldn't. This deck has helped me work through many difficult times and I love it for that and I had been obsessed with this deck for a very long time and because of that that was why it saw me through many different life changes 
and I think that's why it holds such a special place for me. This is actually the card. When I first saw this card, when this deck was being created, I was like, oh, that's it. It's looking into my soul just with this image. So there's, I mean, there's really not much to be said about it. This is a soul deck. I love it. It's got its own, you know, a little bit of its own system, but it's, to me, easy to understand and easy to get along with. It's not so different and so off base that it's stressful to use. And I, when I first got this deck, I was actually kind of afraid to use it. I felt like I really love the artwork, but I wasn't ready yet. I wasn't ready yet. And um, it actually sat on the shelf for a while. So the connection with this was fast and it roped me in and just helped me heal so much. So yes, the dreams of Gaia Tarot. I could go on and on about this deck. A viewer had once mentioned when I was talking about this deck that I should do a video about how I work with this deck. And I would love to, and I've sat down to take notes for it three or four times and sort of been, you know, stumped how to go about it, but I will. I definitely want to. I guess it's just uh, very personal, which is good. And I think that kind of thing needs to be talked about. So that is definitely in the works. Last one. Stunning, stunning deck. And I know I've mentioned before, I've thought about getting the pocket version. I've had some comments being like, oh yeah, it's really nice. You know, the cardstock's nice. I just haven't done it yet. Purely just on, there's just so much like love and feeling in these cards. I don't know if I could um, get another and maybe feel the same way. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm being, you know, sentimental and silly, but. So the Dreams of Guy Tarot. So these next three are probably not surprising to you. They weren't surprising to me either, but um, Two of them I haven't had for very long. But again, we're breaching into I couldn't live without this. The Druidcraft Tarot. So this is by Philip and Stephanie Cargom, and it's illustrated by Will Worthington. Uh, so the fascination with this deck is something super pagan and something super earthy. It's what I was hankering for, and this deck fulfilled that and more. I cannot believe it took me so long in my tarot journey. I definitely believe that things happen for a reason, and I destiny is all. <laughs> However, I could kick myself because I love this so much. But it definitely came along at a time when I needed it. And I love it. Oh, nudity. You've been warned. So the animals in this deck, you know, that gives me something that I was looking for in this. I love the earthy feeling. The Celtic feeling mixed in with you know, ancient Albion and potentially King Arthur. There's, you know, some of them feel very Scottish to me. They're just, they're all gorgeous. The guidebook is just full of so much, so much information. Oh, I love this with the bird. So yes, I could show all these, but it's amazing. The Druid Craft. So I mean, if I didn't have such an affinity for some of those ones that I first mentioned, like 
the Shadowscapes, and the Crystal Visions. This is the deck that wants to edge those two out as like my absolute favorite, the one that I want to reach for the most. And there, this spent, you know, almost this whole year, so since March when I got it, being that deck that I wanted to reach for. So this would be one of the ones where if I did this video in a year, I'm not sure how that would go. This one would probably definitely be on the list. Okay, next, I've had this deck for the least amount of time out of all of these, but I had to, I had to. I, I couldn't pick anything else, it had to be this. The Tarot Vampires by Ian Daniels. This is published by Llewellyn. Oh, I just, I love it so much. I specifically got this to work with it for, you know, the fall time of the year, sort of like September, October, and I'm so in love with it. I don't even care what time of the year it is. I'm just gonna use it year round. I mean, look how, this is a perfect card to start with. Look how dramatic. Oh, all of it is just so dramatic. And I love it. Oh, see, like, it just makes me smile. Yes, are some of them a little cheesy? Sure. You know, very fashion model, sort of Vogue looking at some points. But this is like all my favorite vampire anythings rolled into one. Dracula, um, Interview with a Vampire, um, Vampire Diaries, Originals, you know, like there are so many. All the Anne Rice books I've ever read. <laughs> my most recent favorite vampire book, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Oh, so yes, it's just everything. It fulfills a lot for me. It makes me smile and it can be cheeky, yet also, um, oh, what's a good way to go about this? Smart, very smart. And sometimes I'll do a reading and I'll literally sit back and like maybe, you know, hold, pick up a card just to look at the art a little bit more and I'm literally either saying out loud or thinking to myself, clever, very clever. It goes about its messages in a clever way and it's not confusing or anything. You just, you you look at the cards, you get your message and you're just like, huh, okay, I hear you. Nicely done, nicely done. So yeah, I just, I had to add this deck to this list. I'm not putting it away anytime soon, that's for sure. And I really think this just is gonna be a favorite. It is like the dark version of Shadowscapes. And for that, I think they go hand in hand, and these cards are very detailed as well. I just, ugh. Sometimes I have like no words. I just wanna like hug it. <laughs> okay, last one. Ooh, I lied, this one. Okay. Hero Vampires by Ian Daniels. This is published by Llewellyn. I actually really like this new thinner Llewellyn cardstock. It shuffles really nice and I think it'll hold up pretty good. It's better than the like sort of uh, cardboard kind that my Shadowscapes and Animal Totems on. It's a little thinner, um, more laminated or you know glossy, but I like it. All right, so those nine were relatively easy for me to pick out. And then I was like, oh, I have one left. How could I possibly forget or not even think of? Because I'm not doing any honorable mentions for this. I said, you know, Katie Flower said no caveats, 10 decks only. But I will say I almost picked the Hanson Roberts because I carry that around with me in my bag for a long time. And for me, that is like the closest thing that I have to an RWS. And then I thought... Ugh, oh, you're silly. It has to be the Morgan Greer. So this is the tin size. I keep it in my bag. And I've had it in my bag for many, many years. I, I've done so many like impromptu readings for myself, for friends. 
I used to take it with me, not just in my bag, like in my purse, but in like my bag when I went to work. And besides the Hanson Roberts, this is probably the next closest, or you know, they're on the same level closest of style to RWS. I sort of love this uh, zoomed in feeling that you get with each card. The colors are a little, you know, a little, no, that's a lie, super bright and in your face. And some of the characters just give me that like Starsky and Hutch or like Magnum PI feel. And some of them I think like Tom Selleck because of the mustaches. But you know, that's not a bad feeling. <laughs> See, I mean, like this guy. Like, doesn't he remind you of Ben Stiller in Starsky and Hedge? How can he not? But yes, very stunning. I actually really love the colors. It's always been well received by other people that actually, you know, they know nothing about the tarot or, you know, maybe it's their first time seeing any tarot cards. So yes, I think it's just a really good all around deck for any type of reading, any type of situation, for you know personal or somebody that you're reading for. So yes, this I feel like this is a classic, but um, when I had watched a handful of these, a lot of people had mentioned a you know specific RWS deck. And so when I fulfilled those nine spots and I looked down at my paper and I was like, oh, it would be the Hanson Roberts because I really do reach for that one a lot. And then this one came to mind and I was like, oh, that's it. And I mean, I come to all these decks with raw feelings and emotions, but I feel like this deck gets a different feeling and emotion from me that the others don't because I personally just have it with me all the time, you know, no matter the instance. And I feel like that gives us a little bit of a different connection compared to the others that, you know, live the posh life and are inside on the shelf, coffee table, end table, dresser, just around the house. And this one gets shuffled around in my bag and it's tin. It's gotten so warped that I, sometimes I almost can't get the lid off but I mean like look how <laughs> I mean okay it, it's a little cheesy but I need that kind of cheesy in my life I'm looking for that okay last one moon card so I thought that this was going to be a little difficult for me and it turned out to be pretty easy I'm pretty proud of myself for the decks that I picked how I went about it and I would like this to be a thing. You know, I'd like, I'd like this to be a, you know, it's reaching the end of the year. Let's see what my 10 decks would be if I had to pick 10. And it'd be interesting to go back and look through the years and see what changes, what stays the same. Because like I mentioned before, I really feel like a lot of these would be the same no matter what. I mean, I could be totally wrong. It could change like that. I could get that um, Smoke, Ash, and Embers deck and not think about another one of the, you know, one of these ones again. No, that's not true. I love you guys. Don't listen. But um, yeah, I just, a lot of these decks, I couldn't imagine my day-to-day -day without them, let alone my entire tarot practice or tarot journey without these decks. And I definitely thought it was interesting how two oracles in the eight tarot, you know, will there be an oracle that pushes some of these others aside? Maybe, who knows, we'll see. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have one of these, definitely mention it below. I've been searching by the tag to watch. So if you make one, definitely tag it. They're super fun to watch. And this was just really awesome. So, so thanks to Katie for the wonderful tag. And I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.